how to, you know, good week of practice again, uh, you know, uh, continually just, you know, press the way our guys come to work every week, every day. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a fun group to coach. And, uh, you know, we got a big challenge at hand, um, dealing with Clemson's defense and their offense. And obviously their special teams are talented. Um, you know, I think Pat Bossick told me yesterday they've had, you know, 10 straight, you know, top 10 recruiting classes. And uh, we got one guy that's late. Laps. And um, but um, so I mean they're a talented football team coming into our house and uh, you know the last couple of times that we've not fared well so um, I think our guys are looking forward to uh, you know a gigantic challenge um, in Clemson who is the measuring stick of this conference period and they know how to win they're they're a winning football team uh, they've won a lot of football games big games small games all games uh, they find a way to win so uh, well coach questions how do you you know with the approach this week you know how do you balance Trying to make it just like every other week, taking, you know, just we're going to do it the way we've done it every week, but also, you know, getting the guys to buy into the fact that it is a big game, that there's, you know what I mean, that there's a real opportunity you want, you, want them to embrace. How do you kind of balance between yeah, I mean, the two? You know, there, it's one game, and last week doesn't matter, and, it, and it, I think they know it's a bigger game. I don't have to tell them it's a bigger game. They know, and I think every, you know, next week will be a bigger game. And then the week out, every one of these games just continues to get bigger, okay? Uh, and it's not necessarily the opponent, it's, it's you know, when you're sitting with a you know a record like we are, it's just like just continue to get more important, and they they mean more, and I think they all know that. I don't have to spell it out for them. I don't you know uh, write a book for them. I think it's just kind of part of the process and part of what you know college football is. When you start to you know get to that point, then um, they understand that. They know it's another game, and it, it becomes bigger, and, it, and it's easier to get them to practice every week as well. I mean, it just becomes like they know. Uh, but you know, it should not change the way we approach the game. You know, it should not change the way um, you know we practice, or you know, it shouldn't get us more hyped for the game or motivated for the game because you know we got to go out and play like we play. How did uh, Wendell do with money? And because you have a chance to get more playing time at the mic. Or Wendell. Mike, what did, I, yeah. what did I say? How you did said that? money. You were thinking about money. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> well, did he have him on the outside a little bit? Uh, no. He, yeah? no, no, no. He, you know, Wendell, Wendell Davis has played really good for us. I'm, I'm excited about him. Um, you know, Phil Campbell will be back. So you'll have Phil, Voss, and, and Wendell. Um, you know, Wendell needs a break. You know, so Voss can go in there. Phil can go in. I mean, you know, it's nice to have Phil back this week. So I'll give you an injury update because it's not a, it's a health update. Um, so we're, we're glad Phil's back. Uh, we're not going to wear him out. Um, the good thing is we, we got guys to rotate in there. Did you? Did it seem like Sarasia was more comfortable being back on the outside? You know what? I, I think he's comfortable anyway. If you asked him flat out, hey, which one do you like? I like them both, coach. You know, I don't think he feels more comfortable in one spot more than the other. He's good at both, I can tell you that. But then he made a lot of plays last week with 10 tackles, whatever it was. Um, but he's, you know, he's been productive. And um, so, you know, I, I don't think he cares which one. Um, it's kind of, hey, where do you need me, coach? What's the importance of getting splashed from him? He's, he's one of those guys that can make those type of plays. Like, how much. It's important because he's a smart guy, and, and sometimes you feel like he makes more plays on the edge, just because he maybe has a little bit more opportunity to make an effect on the play. But uh, he's good at Mike linebacker too. You just don't notice the splash plays. He's in his gap. He's you know he, he's smart enough to get everybody lined up. But he's just a, he's got a nose for the football. Besides being really smart, he's got a nose for the football, um, and he finds it. Clemson doesn't have a whole lot of like, huge numbers in sacks or interceptions but their defense is still one of the best. Is that because they're really good in situational football? And how do you guys prepare for a group that, really with the way they, they prepare, what they kind of do? Yeah, I mean, getting interceptions and turnovers and sacks, that's not, you know, that's not making you a good defense. It really doesn't. Um, they play together, and sometimes you can be selfish and, you know, on a run trying to get a, you know, get a sack. Well, that's a bad time to try to get a sack. You know, the defense been running up the field. So they play together. Uh, they're, they're smart. They're well coached. Um, it's not about the stats. I tell you guys that every week. I mean, they, they, they smother you. They smothered everybody they played pretty much. I mean, just to think that, you know, the number one team in the country didn't score a touchdown on that defense. Okay, so that's the buzzsaw we're running into. This week. They didn't score a touchdown. It was a pick six, Jerry. It was 10 7. It was a pick six. So Clemson's offense gave that thing up. And um, you just watch every game, and, and they do a lot of different things. Um, so, um, you know, it's going to be a challenge. What do they do well defensively in the red zone specifically? Because I know that rate is. Pretty high up there, maybe second in the country. Yeah. Georgia. They stop from getting in the end zone. They bend a little bit and get down there and, and buckle up. But um, you know, they're, they're so stout up front. Um, you know that you know when you get down there, it's, it's hard to throw it because the field got shrunk. And then you better be able to run it. And if you can't run it on that defense, then you're going to have an issue. So we're going to have to run it, find a way to squeak some runs in there, 
uh, like we have this year when we've gotten down to the red zone. And we're gonna, we have to throw with efficiency. Guys got to be in the right spots. We've got to make sure there's good spacing in our, our pass concepts. Who was the first guy to put uh, Kenny Pickett's name in your head five years ago? And <clears throat> what was your first meeting like with him? And wh why did you say to yourself, I need to recruit this guy? I mean, he was a he was a no brainer coming out of high school. We just loved him. We got on him early, and and um, you know I don't remember the first conversation. I remember the home visit where my wife was able to come to that home. I think it's the only uh, home visit my wife's ever gone on. Uh, we were on the way to a New York City. Uh, uh, New, what was the thing in New York City? Uh, Coach Hall of Fame dinner. God, yeah, the, the Hall of Fame dinner. So we kind of flew in there. You know, met with the Pickett family at their house and went to the school. Uh, and uh, so that was a good visit. Wife got that one done, I think. What was it about him that you liked? I mean, he said he was five years younger than he is now. Yeah, you know, we liked him like the other 85 guys that we had him on scholarship uh, or were super seniors. You know, just you love them all. I mean, and some end up being like Kenny Pickett. I mean, great character, great people, great player. Um, and, and some are like Savasi Dan. I mean, they're all, they're all, you love them all. And, you know, I can't, I mean, can't tell you it's any different except my wife went on that home visit. I'll remember that one for, for so a she long time. She connected with the family? She, she got it done. She was the reason. Was, was there a lot of riding on that visit? Because, you know, Canada had left and some other schools were trying to get him away. Yeah. I mean, was, was I that? I there like was a lot. I think that, you know, I don't remember, you know, that early date in December. I think it started to heat up even more after that. But, you know, there's a lot riding on every visit, you know. Um, you know, the, the, every visit's important, whether it's at a school, you know, a visit for a, a game on a weekend. They're all important. Uh, you can't say one's more important. But, you know, obviously, you know, home visit, I only get one. Uh, so that was a great visit. And, um, it was, it was, helped him get here. Uh, you mentioned uh, you wanted to see how Izzy practiced this week, how he responded in practice, how has he responded, and what is the significance of, of getting some type of run game, not just red zone, but you know, throughout the day? Run game's important, and it ain't gonna be easy, I can tell you that. Um, again, they're so good. Um, looks like the, the steel curtain out there coming back to Pittsburgh. Uh, they, they've got, they're impressive, but uh, the run game's important. We've got to be able to get it. We can't let them just tee off and think it's a pass every down. So we've got to be able to mix it up, you know, the run game in there. Uh, but we also got to take what they're giving us, um, you know, based on coverages and different checks that our offense will make, you know, based on what they look like. Uh, we got to take what they, you know, what, what are they giving us today? Uh, you know, we don't know. We don't, we don't know what their game plan is, but we'll find out once that game starts at 3.30. How did Izzy practice? Is that a he good practiced one? great. Izzy had a great week of practice. So. John. So did Vince. So did Vince. So did Robbie. John mentioned uh, Clemson's red zone defense. I mean, that's an area where you guys have improved as much as anywhere from one year to the next year, red zone offense. I mean, is there something you put that on? I mean, what, what do you think you guys have done better down there? Is it a lot of things, or is there one thing that stands out? You know, I think it's just a, you know accumulation of a lot of different things. I don't think you can put your point, you know, finger on it. You know, we practiced a lot in the red zone, got a lot of spring ball red zone, got a lot of fall camp red zone. And, um, and you know your own line's playing good. You're running the ball. You're throwing the ball. And anytime you can throw, it's going to open up your run game. Anytime you can run, it's going to open up your throw game. Uh, so I think it's just a combination of everything. There's not a magic wand that we you know kind of said, hey, let's have a red zone uh, offense. Uh, it's just an accumulation. It's everybody playing well. It helps when you have tight ends. I mean, a year ago, guys, we didn't have a tight end. Uh, you know, we just didn't have a guy that was like Lucas and Gavin has, has been special for a freshman. Has Gavin surprised you? No, not at all. He hadn't surprised me. He surprised me when he got here first day, you know, first day of spring ball. Like, you know, we're, we're, whoa, you know. But that surprise has been, I mean, he's been steady. You talk about how Kenny Pickett's played. You talk about how Jordan Addison's played. Gavin's another one of those guys that does not have an up and down day. He's the same guy every day. And, you know, and I'll mention those three, and maybe I can mention five more that are like that, uh, maybe 10 more. But there's not, I don't have 85 of them like that. I can guarantee you that there's up and down days. Yeah, you mentioned on Monday the like Clemson's explosives. Is it hard when you guys are in a film room preparing for this team where their offense hasn't really clicked yet? It hasn't really popped. But is it hard to relay that to their, to your players that like, hey, this is the potential to pop. You know, these right. guys have the talent, but it's like you're trying to convince them almost. Yeah, uh, you know, hope we don't have to convince them. You're a fade away, right? You're a fade away. You know, you're push off away from a bit, an explosive play. So. Um, you know, it's just what it is. And all you got to do is put on the tape from last year. And, you know, we always have, you know, a game or two that are in those cut-ups of what, what it's looked like and how they attack us compared to how they're going to attack North Carolina or, or, you know, Georgia Tech for that matter. So what are they going to do to us? You know, I think we got a good feel for a three-year study. Uh, we've got to defend them. And, and uh, you know, I don't, 
don't think that anybody's going to take their, their offense lightly. Better not. They're in trouble. I apologize, Coach. How about one more? And then we'll get to wrap it up and get to uh, do you, obligations. Do you feel like your corners have been really challenged yet this season? I think they're challenged every week. I mean, I think, you know, go to Virginia Tech last week, I think 12 or 13 of the first 15 plays were passes, <laughs> right? I mean, they're, they're chucking it. So, yeah, they're, they're getting challenged every, every game. Uh, the challenge is, regardless of what the coverage is, you know, they're getting hit with the fades, they're getting hit with the comeback, which is something we practice a lot of. Uh, they've been they've been challenged. Chris, you got the last one. They're going to be challenged with some 6-3. I think they lie on the depth chart. I think they might be 6-5 wideouts. It says 6-3, which is tall. Uh, you guys ought to go down there with the measuring stick and find out pregame. What have you seen with their offensive line? If uh, their quarterback is good at, mo at moving and trying to extend plays, he's a big guy. What does the offensive line do protection-wise that impresses you on, on tape? You know, they, they play together. I mean, um, they're the same. You know, they got three returning starters from last year, so um, they lost a you know they lost a big left tackle. It's in the NFL. I don't know what round he even went. What round did he go? Anybody know? Third. Third. Or third. I think it's third. I mean, he was a, he was strong. I mean, he he get your hands on you. Uh, but their left tackle seventy one is again their best player up front. So um, so they got another left tackle and and um, so you know they're a good football team. We'll find out Saturday. I'll let you know Saturday after the game. Coach, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Okay, guys.